Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. This week, the Waterbox Peninsula turns one year old. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Teats. Now, I'm super excited because I just realized this week will be the, the one year mark of when I set up the water box, when I filled it. And yeah, it's pretty cool. It's actually one year. It's almost hard to believe it. Like that being said, I've done tons of crazy stuff to it. So super excited. I figured one year kind of tank birthday is a great time for tank update. So kick back and let's check things out. So I've always been a huge advocate of putting the tank somewhere in your main living space, somewhere you're gonna see it, you're gonna enjoy it and actually check it out more. And this has really held true for the water box. It's kind of right beside my dining table, can see it from the kitchen, can see it from the living room. So it really gives you a lot of opportunity to really enjoy the tank. And the more you see it, the more attention you're going to give it, and the more enjoyment and the happier the tank and you are going to be. So definitely if you are planning a new build, pick somewhere central to your house, pick somewhere you're actually going to see it, somewhere you're going to enjoy it and just really appreciate it. Now one thing I really love about the Peninsula tank is it's like having multiple tanks in one and you can see it from anywhere around the main living space, which really does add quite a bit to it. I do frequently get a lot of people commenting on the clarity of my tank and that's always been a big thing for me. Giving it six feet of water, just being able to look down the far end and see details all the way at the end of the back and the camera doesn't even do it justice, but having that extra crystal clear water on a Peninsula really does make a big difference. When you kind of look at your fish from the side, it almost makes them look like they're floating, which is really cool. Now it's not, it hasn't been all sunshine and roses of course. I've had to deal with some dino and a few other issues when the tank first started. But now that it's aging, everything really is settling in and things are pretty happy. Uh, the only one bit of issue I've had is some of my A-cans are receding on me. So I did move a handful of them to the frag tank and the few in here, like they look fairly happy right now, but there was a bunch that were receding on me. So I did pull them from this tank and put them in the other tank. And I'm not 100% sure why, because everything else in the tank is happy and thriving. The Ghani Gardens filled in quite nicely. Uh, a couple of retrospect, if you look at the long tentacle Ghanis, they're kind of overshadowing some of the short ones. Like there's a super vibrant green one, but he's kind of hiding under the tentacles of the other one. So I probably should have planned that a little better and given where the flow is, put more of the short tentacle ones kind of maybe more bottom left and the longer ones on the top right. But other than that, they are happy. Uh, one thing I did learn is whatever acro is above it, the bottom of it is died off a bit. And I guess whatever that kind of flame Gani has been stinging it. So I didn't actually think Ghani's would sting Acros, but there you go. You can still see the tips are all healthy, but the base where the Ghani is tickling it has definitely receded. So lesson learned on that one. Uh, the plate corals are nice and happy. These guys are big, tentacles coming out as always. Rockflower Island. Now this guy has been pretty awesome because not a single flower has left the island, which is really cool. Um, I was kind of worried about it. Now, one of the big tricks with that is making sure that all of the flowers have their own little hole. So the rock is on, had a ton of little tiny holes in it, making sure each one had its own little foot spot. Hey buddy, <laughs> made a big difference. So, um, what's up, what's up? It's kind of fun to play with the fish too. So having a hole for every foot makes a huge difference to actually get them stay in place. Now the couple that did move were actually babies, so I did see it spawn in the tank and I have spotted a couple babies throughout the tank. Now one of the biggest babies is this gorgeous pink and yellow one, so that's actually a really cool one. He picked a cool spot there, so they'll be stoked for that one. Uh, the one that snuck a little higher up, if you can see it, up on the base of that acro, there's a multicolored bullseye one, so that's a pretty cool looking one. So at least they're really cool, kind of ultra nice ones that have kind of spread loose and moved around the tank. Back corner here is more of my euphilia. We got all the frog spawn, the bicolor hammers um, on the side here. Looking up above it, the cetosa is kind of getting buried, so maybe I should move that up a little bit. And same with the branching cyphastria. Now this corner, you, you kind of don't see it as much on the back of the tank, but you do see it when you're walking up the stairs, which kind of gives it a cool effect. Got some rainbow clove polyps back there, some dumpkins, uh, a bunch of zoas. One of my favorite ones are the utter chaos, which are growing up all over the rock and we got the kryptonite bounce just in front of it. Now the tank is definitely a little on the acro heavy and I do have a mixed reef. Can never discriminate, always have to pick multiple types of coral, can never settle on just one. But like the Miyagi Tort, Rainbow Loom, a bunch of the Stags, the Green Slimer, a bunch of these guys have been growing very well and they're very happy back here. 
couple semi new additions. Um, I added that green and yellow cypastria, of course they're photobombing, to the back. So I pulled a chunk of that out of my frag tank, put that in. I think the green and yellow look really cool growing over that. And I think that one's called John Deere Leptosiris, or there's another name for it. There's two that are super similar. And also added a little bit of jack-o'-lantern, which will look really cool. Uh, another one that I think is going to look really cool. This is one that died back a little bit. There's still a few polyps, but this was all Cyphastria. No idea wasn't happy, but I took a few chunks of Jason Fox Freak Hair Pavona. I planted those on here, and I think this is going to look really awesome because it's kind of a pink with like bright yellow polyps. So once that's encrusted, it's going to look really cool. Now we were talking about the Ghanis. This long tentacle gunny is huge. Now this guy, you don't see it from the front of the tank and you barely see on the back, but it takes up this whole crevice between the two rocks. I've been kind of toying if I leave that guy there or if I move him to a different chunk of the tank, just cause you don't see it. But then again, it is big and I don't know where the heck else I'd put it. So it might just stay there, but still pretty cool to see that one. The torch garden is happy as ever. I did one of my updates a few months back. The Aussie gold did bite the dust on me, but everyone else has been happy and thriving. I've actually pulled out a few of the dragon souls and moved them over to the frag tank. The clam, this guy is huge and happy. So this guy is a Skomosa clam. It's probably the size of a football, but really cool clam. It's got some very beautiful kind of almost fluorescent bits on it. So super cool. And just look at the size when compared to the tanks. It just gives you a bit of perspective on how big that clam is. So super duper cool clam. A little Gargonian, just a little bit of flow. So he's at the very far end of the tank, away from all the flow. And a couple of zoas fell off. Snail, the only pain the snails is they tend to knock stuff off the rocks. So I got a couple different zoas I got to put back up. Now this guy, Pink Lemonade, is turning pink, which is awesome to see because he was green for the longest time. So we're getting those nice pink kind of on all the new growth and it's encrusting starting to branch up that was one of my favorite corals where this guy which is the palmer's blue millipora doesn't quite pick up the colors on camera as well but beautiful beautiful coral with kind of pa pastel blue polyps and i thought i lost a good chunk of that when i was moving tanks from my prior tank i had a little chunk that lived and i put it in it's encrusting and growing so i got some good future hope there uh, Red Planet, this guy was one of my nemesis corals for whatever reason. I tried three or four times in my old tank and it just never took off. And this guy is finally growing, it's encrusting, and it's starting to change color at the polyps so, or at the tips. So there's good hope of actually getting that nice bright pinky red. Uh, Blue Matrix, this guy's encrusting, super happy. The one up above is Pink Cadillac, so that's encrusting very well and happy. Uh, that guy is called Fruit Splash and he's been puddling like crazy. I'm seeing a little nub actually of growth there, which is the first kind of new branch I've seen in a while. So that's good to see. Coming off, I don't even know what that one is, but we got a bunch of zoas coming up. Um, same on this side of the rock. This is Jason Fox, Fox Flame. That on the backside, there's a ton of new little bumps growing up with the bright yellow tips. So it looks super duper cool. So overall, I'm gonna say like most of the acros, everything is nice and happy. There was one bit on one of the purple bonsais where it started to STN a little bit, but then it stopped. So you can kind of see the one in the middle of the line where it stopped. So it didn't do anything, stopped all on its own, which was good to see. But so it's coming back, one's around it. Um, I do have a bit of aptation here. I'm gonna say it's my only one pest. I do kelp paste it once in a while, so it'd be nice to fully clear it up. Um, I have been debating putting a copper band in here, but I know they can munch on other stuff. So I did pick a little guy up and he's currently living in my frag tank. So if he's kind of well behaved and doesn't need any corals in there after three or four months, then maybe I'll move him over to the big tank. But super cool, beautiful fish. And a couple different chunks of the pink Millie. So that guy is very pretty, super bright. Um, the camera doesn't quite pick it up and show the true colors, which I wish it did because that guy is like a beautiful, beautiful pink. Got that, the red dragon, same thing. It's very vibrant pink, that's growing well. Uh, coming up the rock here, this guy is Anacropora. So this is my little Anacropora corner. Those guys are doing well. Um, the elegance coral isn't quite as big and plump as it normally is, not quite sure why, but in general, that guy's been doing pretty good for a while now. Uh, the little orange Monty guy, this guy should look pretty cool. Now this was a tricky spot. I previously had, I think it's called Maleficent, but it's kind of that green and pinky one. It used to be right here. And some of the flesh was literally dying on it because it was getting blasted with too much flow. 
Um, so what I did is I moved that forward, I moved that over to the side. Now it's too much flow because there is an MP60 right there. So that's a lot of flow that goes by there. So I put on the Monty Pour and these guys are supposed to have a lot of flow. And that bright orange with the green polyp, she gives a nice kind of contrast up there. Uh, moving up the rock, we have Rainbow Loom. So all the new growth on it from the last month or two is getting that nice purple color. Um, up beside it, we have the orange passion. So super duper orange polyps. Thing is very, very fuzzy and it's got that nice baby blue color. So really cool coral. It hasn't really encrusted or growing a ton, but it's been super polypy and happy. So I'm hoping it will take off at some point. Same thing down there. That's Walt Disney, which has, again, hasn't done a whole lot, but I'm hoping eventually that will take off and do something fun. A few other mystery ones, no idea what that guy is, but he's a really cool purple and green. Um, so I've got lots of stuff which I'm hoping will blossom into a wonderful, really cool corals in the future. But overall, I'm very, very happy with the tank and how things have come along over the past year. Aquascape wise, absolutely love how everything worked out with it. Um, now there is still lots of little corals hiding in the cracks and stuff. Like, you know, I got another Duncan Colony hiding down there. and. I may thin out the tank a little bit more and make a little more open sand bed. That was one of my goals before is when I first had it, I had before I had my frag tank, the whole sand bed looked like a frag tank, but now I'm slowly cleaning and opening it up. Like I had a massive kind of the green Japanese toadstool and I left a little frag in this tank and moved the big guy to my frag tank. So lots of corals I like, but lots also can take up too much space. So I do appreciate seeing a bit of sand bed. Now, a lot of people ask about the flow and because it's a peninsula, I really did not want any power heads on these three sides of it. And so far, so good. I have two MP60s and these guys provide a lot of flow. They're currently running at about 70-75% on reef crest and that's for both of them. And so far they're providing enough flow for everything in the tank. Long term will I have to add more when it is full of corals? Maybe, but for now you know, everything's flowing, everything's happy and doing good. And you know, like right now it seems fairly subtle, but sometimes when a, the reef crest cranks up, you can really see the polyps whipping around on the torches everywhere. But they, at the current moment, everything is absolutely happy and I'm pretty stoked for only having the two pirates on the tank. Uh, got the Coltang or the Red Sea Sailfin Tang. His one eye is a little bit funky. Um, someone told me it might be, I was talking to Humblefish, I think he said it could be Popeye and there wasn't a ton you can do with it except for just good water quality and time. So hopefully that fixes himself. But I know he's probably about 12 years old now or, or older, but super cool fish. He is very friendly and he's like the first one to go after food. And he always tries to steal about the power heads, but he's been pretty good. Um, down below, with the control panel. So don't have my sweet sign on right now, but Adaptive Reef made me the awesome Reef Dude sign. So again, thank you for that, Kyle. And we got the Versa control panel here. So we got the L2 return pump and two MP60s and above it is my whole slew of dosing pumps. Yes, I know these are hard to find. They took me ages to get them. Absolutely love these pumps though. So can't get enough of them. Um, so running my calcium reactor continuous auto water change. I've been dosing a 50% dose of flatworm stop and coral booster for no reason other than I read they're supposed to increase in cresting and I'm hoping it actually does. And these are all dosing trace elements. So I've been trying to figure out the sweet spot for automating trace elements because I was a slacker on dosing them. So I have a bunch of the Brightwell ones on there. And I've t ICP test about a month ago. So sometime in the near future, I'm gonna do another ICP test and see where all my levels are and kind of tweak my dosing. So it may take a few rounds, but she's definitely getting there. We got the Clarity. So this guy's been a huge chunk of my pristine water clarity. I'm gonna attribute to the Clarity. Now this guy pulls all the particles out of the water, um, especially when you feed, there's leftover stuff. It helps pull it out before it breaks down. So it definitely helps with nutrients. And given that I have six tangs plus a whole slew of other fish, I definitely feed a lot and there is a lot of nutrients in my tank to deal with. So the filter roller definitely helps. Um, I also have, a 50, I believe it's 57, 54, 57 watt aqua UV in there. And that also helps with water clarity. Um, previously was using ozone, but since I changed to um, outside airline and I put on some of the soda lime on it to scrub it and help boost my pH, since I've done that, I took the ozone offline. So I may still add it in the future, but so far it's working really well as is. 
all my trace elements I'm just dosing right into this first chamber here. Uh, the sump is a custom made sump by Geo's Reef. Absolutely beautiful sump. He did a fabulous job on it. Wasn't cheap, but it is a work of art. The skimmer is the NIAS 220. Now one actually really interesting thing on it is I actually pulled off the outtake tube because my water level was a little bit higher than it's supposed to be. And look at this, the skimmate on it is basically perfect. Super dark skimmate and it's been skimmed like a champ and there's no output tube so the output is wide open. And that helped compensate for that little bit of extra water height. So that's been pretty awesome. Uh, next chamber over is my refugium and I'm using the prime fuge on it. My current mount's a little bit ghetto, it's just kind of sitting on a box balancing, but I'm going to take one of the AI Fuge Lights stands and cut it up and just bolt it to the back wall and like permanently suspend it and make a nice little mount for it. So on my to-do list, so that will happen in the next couple weeks. Coming over to the other side, we have kind of the, the mad mayhem of dosing. And majority of the my tank is handled by the Geo's Reef Calcium Reactor. This thing is huge and an absolute beast. Uh, the Versa is pushing water through it and then from there it leaves, it goes into the second chamber, flows up through all this media, then to the tank. Again, the second chamber I added just to lower the CO2 a little bit and also help with the pH. So I've been on that whole raise my pH bandwagon for a while and it's slowly getting up there. Um, also in the back, I have the little carbon doser, so that helps just super steady CO2 usage. And kind of hiding behind it, you can't really see it in the corner there, but I have the cryptic reactor, which is just holding a bunch of bio media. And Cryptic, aka has no light, it is supposed to be a good place for bacteria. Over here you can see the other side of the sump, so Refugium grows like crazy. I've given, I think, three different people Chato in the last month, and there's still tons and tons in here. So that light grows it like crazy. Um, this stuff is actually something new I'm trying. It is from, I think it's called Ultra Marine. It's supposed to, it's, I believe it's some type of carbon dosing because it's supposed to help remove nitrates. And I definitely have lots of those, so I've been trying this out. And so I'm probably due to give the tank a test today and see what it's doing. Uh, next over in the reactor, to, uh, I do have some GFO, row of phosphate, and carbon in there. I change that every four to six weeks, and that's just to help with all the phosphates and keep the levels nice and low. And return pump, we have the Ecotec L2. And we've got the little float valve in there, got all the probes. And look in the back, you can kind of see that little pre-filter in the bottom. That leads over to the Alcatronic, which is my alkalinity tester hiding behind my controller board. Now they have a new one coming out soon called the Mastertronic, which tests basically everything we care about. So I'm kind of stoked for that. So I'm hoping I can squeeze one of those into there and that will automate all my testing because I'm a bit of a slacker at that. And one of my New Year's resolutions is to get better at testing. Now one of the most common questions I get on my tank is about my light bar. So this quick overview this is made out of extruded aluminum this is 1515 I have done a few different videos on how to so if you guys want to know how to make your own definitely check those out because it gives your tank a very very sleek look um, this guy is just bolted to the wall kind of seeing the crack uh, previous one in like my, my fried tank it goes into the stand this guy's just bolted to the wall and it just gives your lights a very sleek kind of floaty look top on the tank is a D&D jump guard now this one is my favorite because if you look at the side of it, super duper sleek. There's a little tab around the whole tab, the whole mesh top and it insets into the tank. So I, I would prefer not to have a tank, but obviously it's important to have a top on it. So look at that, super sleek. Um, I also prefer the black mesh over the clear mesh. The clear mesh I find just reflects light at you and I find it really distracting where the black one doesn't do that. So huge fan of the black mesh. Lighting on top is Ecotec XR15 G5 Pros. I want the Pros because I like a little bit of a wider look in the daytime. So between about noon and 4 p.m. my tank is a bit whiter. Like it's still pretty blue, but it's definitely whiter than a lot of people's tanks. And I have about four hours where I have that extra boosted up kind of part schedule with raising my whites up. And I feel that just kind of helps a little more for coral growth. Now, one thing I did this Overflow tower had a glass lid on it, which sat flush with the top. I took that out because it made my screen lid go up a little bit. I just got a piece of black acrylic cut. So it fits in there basically perfectly and lets my top still sit flush on the top. And that was just another little kind of pro tip. So lots of people have asked me how I like the water box tank. Absolutely love it. Um, it is definitely a beautiful tank. And this is the water box 7225. AKA that's the dimension. So it is 72 inches front to back, 25 wide, 
and 24 tall. Um, stand is actually made out of plywood. Not that you can tell now, but when you're putting in the hinges and stuff, you can see all the layers and it's actual legit proper plywood. So very, very well made. Um, the stand gives it a very nice polished look. I love how like the edges of the glass and the tank all meet up together and just makes it look really good. So it's definitely a nice piece of furniture that will look good in your home. Um, the, the overflow tower is all glass. I do definitely appreciate that. You don't have to worry about scratching it. I know a lot of other ones are acrylic. So all glass, you can clean it, scra scrape it, whatever you want, not an issue. Even the overflow teeth in there, they're, I don't know if they're laser jetted out or whatever they are, but so it gives it like just a really polished, nice look. You know, all the edges are polished, whatnot. So the seams got black silicone seams. If you look in the cracks are right to the edge. So I don't even worry about it when I'm using the scraper on the side of the tank. Um, quick pro tip, if you guys are cleaning the edges of your tank, if you go horizontal to it this way, you're not gonna damage your silicone. If you're going down at an angle, that little corner could nick it. So make sure you're always going horizontal to it when you're cleaning those edges. But aside from that, the tank is definitely doing pretty awesome. And for one years old, I'm very, very happy with where the tank is. This has been kind of like the dream build in a way for me. Like, obviously if you can go big and super duper crazy, you know, probably would, but given my current lifestyle and my house and my space, this is definitely the dream build for the current state of life and super duper happy with how everything's come together. Now, speaking of bio load, I do have five, six tangs in the tank. They are all happy. They are getting along. Now, one key thing with this is I did add them all at the same time. Now, th three of the tangs are already together or sorry, two of the tangs are already together from a tank shutdown that I got and the other one I already had. So. They all went into a brand new aquascape at the exact same time. So it kind of gave, there's no territory already to deal with. And everyone kind of had its time to do it, to settle in nicely. Like got the purple tang, got three yellow tang, the hippo tang, and the red sea silicon tang. So they get along well. Um, the other big thing is two things. One, make sure there's lots of caves and holes in your tank. I know with a lot of the new minimalistic aquascapes, sometimes that can be a bit trickier but there's lots of nooks and crannies, you know, everyone has their own little hidey holes and that's a half, a good chunk of making sure everyone plays nice and you know, they get along together. Now, the other big thing I would say too is make sure you feed well. When you have lots of tanks and lots of active fish, you need to feed your tank very well. And if they are well fed, they're not gonna be as nearly as aggressive. Everyone's gonna be a lot more docile. If they're hungry, they're gonna be like scrapping over food or places to hide, right? So. If you do want to keep multiple tangs or lots of stuff, feed very well and make sure you have lots of rock work that gives lots of little homes for all the fish. So those are going to be kind of like the biggest tips on that because I've had a lot of people ask me about the whole multiple tang thing lately. And I also do have a ton of little fish, you know, they got the Zur damsels, I got a bunch of wrasses. I love my wrasses. Um, this guy's actually been out quite a bit lately. He's the, the red-headed wrasse, super cool blue outline on him. You know, I got some fairy wrasses, leopard wrasses. So yeah, I definitely love my wrasses. Same thing, love, love the Antheus. Like they're just bubbly little happy fish. And cleaner wrasses is always good to have. I do have my couple fire shrimp and they hide a lot. They're usually in the caves. I don't, in my last tank, I actually saw the mount tens. This tank, they hide constantly. So I think there's too many caves for them. Uh, I recently added a starfish. So hopefully this guy does well long-term. So far he mainly hangs out on the back glass because there's probably tons and tons of food because that one never gets cleaned. So you guys go the one year update on the Waterbox 7225 Peninsula. I am extremely happy with how it's coming along and can't wait to see how things change over the next year and to see all the corals encrust more and all the acros branch up and just really change the aquascape over time. And I think that's one of the really cool parts of having a reef tank is watching it change and evolve over time. If you guys have any questions on it, as always, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you guys subscribe. I also hit 30,000 followers this week, which is absolutely amazing. So that on the one year mark of the new reef tank, so really cool. So I definitely appreciate you guys. Hopefully you guys subscribed, hit that bell, following along for the journey, and I'll catch you guys on the next update.